end of the circuit to Catalonia. 2.8 miles that the drivers know oh so well. Let's have a little look at the brake duct of the man in second position. Jake Dennis lost a place yesterday in the opening laps going wide. Said he was forced wide. At the start of the race, so he wasn't particularly happy with being edged off the road. That's what he thought happened in the opening meters. It's the longest run down to turn one of the GP3 season. But we weren't seeing the slipstreaming we were hoping for. We look at Alex Albant, who was so very strong. Yesterday, threw one down the inside of Kevin York earlier in the race, wasn't really able to improve, though. Huge disappointment for him, having made the position, but he might have had momentary track position. He wasn't able to make it stick, and York eventually prevailing in the battle for fifth place. Oscar Tunjo, though, and the mechanics will be very quick to clear the grid today because there was all sorts of confusion yesterday between the track officials in the GP2 race. We saw the chequered flag waved one lap early. And the lights, you see them on the gantry there when you get the 15-second rule. The lights have gone green, so there was confusion all round, but no penalties applied for this race. So the grid is exactly how would we would want it. The top eight reversed from yesterday, and every, everyone from ninth downwards lining up behind. So we await the formation lap here in far ah, cooler temperatures than we had yesterday. Track temperature was in the 30s when we were running yesterday's feature race. It is 18 degrees here. And the first track action, as I said today, see a little bit of dry ice has been left on the grid. And one of the tridents running over it. On board with Aitken, who will be looking to perfect the start procedure. Said he had to look at what was wrong. But he did have good pace once he got into the race, which will encourage him. But he knows he's going to have to have a really storming drive from 20th on the grid to have any chance of points. Sandy Stuvig was saying after the race, the man starting way down in 18th, that most of the drivers were anticipating degradation that never really came. We saw huge amounts of degradation in the 2015 feature race, certainly in the last five laps, and that was a race uh, that was mitigated by a safety car for four laps. So the drivers really, from halfway, were managing the tyres. We could see that when we went on board with the drivers, how much they were having to nurse the tyres, but they almost overdid it. And as a result, there was no drop-off, so drivers who were taking it deliberately easy are waiting the degradation. A lot of the experienced runners were doing that, the degradation just didn't turn up. So a new car for this weekend. You weren't with us yesterday, the GP316 looking terrific in the Barcelona sunshine. Newly built chassis from Dallara, a bespoke engine from the good people at Mechachrome. 3.4 litres, 400 brake horsepower. And best of all, it looks absolutely terrific. Alex Palau saying he needed a bit of luck. He was so frustrated. As you see, his supporters in the grandstand. Great view of their man, who I imagine will be on the attack. This race is so often, the majority of it is settled in the first kilometre. And there are 730 metres down to turn one. We saw Jake Hughes trying to come back at Charles Leclerc. But again, the rookies had studied the degradation from last year, so they were wary about pushing. Those who were returning to the series were certain the degradation was coming, and yet with the new machinery. And you see, this can still, after all the running in winter testing around this racetrack, still got caught out, and the temperature is the key thing. And that could play a huge part in today's race with the lower temperatures. 
this is far closer to the conditions that they were testing in a month ago. The grid beginning to form. Spectators anticipating the start as we see the final man on the grid, Stein Stotthorst, the Dutch driver, peeling to the right-hand side. We've got a tail light flashing halfway down the grid there. Hopefully it won't be a problem. We have a green flag at the back, and for the second time in 2016, we await the lights as the revs rise, along with the tension. Five lights on in Barcelona. And we're underway for the first sprint race of the year in GP3. A good start from the pole sitter Tunjo, who's weaving left and weaving right, and he's trying to box out Alex Alvin, who's had an absolute flyer from third, and he's nearly into the lead as Leclerc is getting very close. Alvin, though, has locked up. It's going to be very close between Tunjo and it's Alvin into the lead from third place. An electric start from the Thai driver. He's got himself past Tunjo, who is relegated to second as the pack funneling through turn three for the first time. So it's Alvin, Tunjo, a good start for Fuoco, who's up, and Jake Dennis has lost out as De Vries absolutely storming through from ninth. We're on board with our race winner yesterday. Started in eighth position, Charles Leclerc. As they head down to turn five, he's got a Karayan in front of him. He's got another one alongside him. That's Matt Parry trying to go right around the outside, squeezing him out. And the drivers are likely... Oh, he's getting very tightly squeezed to the grass. My word, that was close, but he kept his foot in. And he's going to keep the position. Crucial for Leclerc. He's currently in 10th place, which won't score him any points. And Parry, after the frustration yesterday of sitting behind his two teammates for the entirety of the race, is determined to get on with it. And after the order settled down yesterday, the drivers know they've got to get moves done like this one. From Kevin York, who's trying to go down the inside very tight indeed with Matyvos Etikan as they go through the final sector of this first lap. But a dream start for Alex Alban from third. We saw exactly the same thing from Leclerc yesterday. ART really with a knack of getting off the line. So we see them funnel through. Here's your order as they complete the first lap. Alex Alban with a nine tenths of a second lead over Oscar Tunjo. Third is Antonio Fuoco. Then it's Jake Dennis in fourth. Nick De Vries with a terrific start. And a huge move and edged onto the grass. Oh, he's still being edged out. My word, that was robust defense. Wow, that was so close. Santino Ferrucci being pushed to the line. And here's Calder on racing her teammate, Jack Aiken. But that really was right on the limit. Let's have another look at it in a moment. But my word, that seemed to be very marginal defense indeed. Really, really scary moments as Parry squeezed Ferrucci. You can see Parry was racing Leclerc, but he's dropped back and he's lost places all the way down the order. So we've got a terrific run on the first out of the last corner and Parry moving around left and right. Ferrucci trying to find himself some room down the inside, couldn't do it. And Parry has maintained the position. Oscar Tunjo just taking a little bit of time. It's Ralph Boschong is now the threat to Leclerc in the battle for 10th position. Very close indeed. Palau has got himself up a couple of positions from 19th to 17th. He was so frustrated. We see Giuliano Alessi there. He is running in 18th. He's managed to get a good start from 22nd, making up four places as it stands at the moment. And unsurprisingly, the stewards are going to investigate that robust defense from Parry and Ferrucci. Not sure what happened to Parry, must have made a mistake or had a difficult final sector because he was all over the back of Leclerc at the start of this race as Oscar Tunjo tries to cement a recovery. Calderon still leading her teammate Aiken. And all the way back in 13th is Parry at the moment trying to compete for the final points paying positions. We've got Jorg on the march, trying to do something about Matyvos Esikan and Hughes, the two Dams cars in Dams' second race in GP3.
as the order begins begins to settle out but here's how Alex Albon watch the third car on the left hand side of your picture just gets a better initial getaway Tunjo little bit of wheel spin let's watch him on the right in the blue Genza car knew he hadn't got the getaway he needed went across to try and fend off Jake Dennis but he hadn't got the start he wanted either and moving to defend from Dennis, open the door for Alvin, who was brave around the outside, and look how close Antonio Fuoco came to collecting Oscar Tunjo at the back. A car off at the background there, it's a Campos who rejoined, likely to be Tereshenko here. We are on board with the race winner yesterday, Charles Leclerc, out dragging his teammate Fukuzumi, who's down in 14th position at the moment. Santino that's Jake Hughes in front of us in the dams. And you can see Boschon getting ahead at this stage. But that position has now reversed. The clerk has managed to get himself further forward. And Jack Aitken we're on board with at this stage. Being outdragged by Akash Nandi. But not the disaster stalling. And he trying to take the wide line. Nowhere to go for Jack Aitken. So having to fall in formation. Got his teammate ahead of him there. And you can see Stuvik in front as well. So here is the incident under investigation. Parry trying to defend and all four wheels off the racetrack. And then another squeeze. You can see the frustration that Parry is having this weekend. And I would not be surprised if he is slapped with a penalty for getting his elbows out and trying to repel the advances of Santino Ferrucci. We're back to the battle between the Dams boys. It's Jorg in seventh and Hughes in eighth as we focus on car number one. So Jorg and Hughes, there wasn't much between them in qualifying. There wasn't much between them in the race yesterday. Jorg was fifth, Hughes was second and a creditable second. Looked like he was going to take the race to Charles Leclerc at one point. Wasn't able to do that, perhaps not knowing the way that this car would behave, the car would react. Tunjo has managed to get the gap down to nine-tenths of a second at the front. Remember, no DRS in GP3. And Leclerc looks to have found his feet in this race. He is staring at the final point. Right in front of him, goes offline, trying to force... York in a huge rather into an error. So roles reversed from yesterday when Hughes was putting pressure on the clerk at this stage of the race. He was getting really close to the end of the pit straight. And now it's a case of hooking up the first sector, not taking too much out of the tires. As Boschong locking up, doing exactly that with his front left. The gap's very, very tight across the field. So much pressure on all of the drivers. Going into turn five there, that is a corner with the left front momentarily lifted in the air because of the way the track falls away. That's a corner you can lock up at and get away with it. So Parry has lost the position now to Santino Ferrucci. You wonder if that's a call on the radio to give the position up to try and mitigate the threat of a penalty. And Ferrucci now beginning to show the pace that he did display. Fukuzumi not having the easiest time of it at the moment. And Richard Gonda is all over the Japanese driver as we go on board with Palau. He's managed to get himself up a position from when we last checked in with him. The man who knows this circuit so well, and he's about to gain another position. As Gonda off the road, we saw it a couple of times, and Gonda dropping down the order. Not what the driver needed at all. And here's Giuliano Alessi trying to take advantage of it. And he does with a tidy move into turn one, which will give the young Frenchman some confidence. But Gonda in the Genza. Getting slightly wide, which is so easy to do in the final turn. They're really hanging on to it. So Gonda in the blue car. We've got Palau behind, putting a lot of pressure on. 
And then you can see wide, a brush with the gravel, not as dramatic as Jake Dennis had yesterday, but still enough to drop him down. The man who was running in 16th, losing places to Stuvik and uh, Lacey. This is what it looked like on board with Alex Palau. Uh, who says thank you very much and is up to 15th position now. So Gonda's faint hope of points has disappeared. Meanwhile, at the front, the gap has stabilised. You can see on your screen now nine tenths of a second between the man in the lead and man in the second place as the Dams boys continue to scrap. Jake Hughes, the 21-year-old who didn't start karting until 16, which is very strange indeed these days in motorsport, trying to chase his teammate Kevin York, the man who was in contention for the Formula Renault Euro Cup last year. Tunjo with a much better lap last time around to get the tenth, to get the gap down to seven tenths of a second. And you can see that Parry is getting ever closer to Santino Ferrucci. So this robust battle, oh, he went slightly offline there, trying to use parts of the racetrack. He wouldn't normally to harry the American out of the way, the American with a development deal with the Haas Formula One team. Parry really strong, and he's nearly clipped him. These two getting stuck into each other once again. Parry with seemingly much better traction, but he's locked up there, and that's going to really put him under pressure. Arta Janos sensing an opportunity to take the place away. Santino Ferrucci is in 11th, 12th is Parry, 13th is Arta Janos, the only driver that Trident have retained from 2015 to 2016. And it's all getting very close indeed. And you can see Parry, not his usual composed self. He was talking about competing for the championship at the moment. He's got to get a move on to score any points this weekend, not the start to 2016 the Welshman wanted. Mare Fukuzumi, the podium yesterday. You can see a little bit of oversteer in the final sector, gaining now after dropping down at the start. Fukuzumi, of course, who started this race in sixth position as Tunjo maintains the gap at seven tenths of a second. We're going to see what Alex Albon is made of in GP3. ART with such a strong lineup this year. Four drivers. That's one of the key rule changes for 2016. Teams allowed to field up to four drivers, and Parry looks much, much better in the opening sector of the lap than Santino Ferrucci. This battle has been going on and on and on since we started the race. Parry seemingly with the momentum but not in the sector where it is oh so crucial. The third one that leads to the main opportunity for overtaking on this racetrack, out of the final corner, down to turn one. And you see what Tunjo is trying to do with the lead, trying to close the gap. Two tenths on lap six, which was really good progress, but he's running in the dirty air of the car in front. Doesn't want to eat through his tires because you can see, we've seen plenty of times in GP3, if you chew your tires up at the start of this race, as Fukuzumi thinking about a move on Arta Janos and thinking better of it. So impressed with Fukuzumi yesterday. Not yet with the best command of English, and we know how important communication is with your engineers in GP3. So many of the returning drivers this year underlining how important they found that. How you know the person that you're dealing with, you know what's going to irritate them. You just know the way to ask. It's the same, it's almost the same in any office environment. You know there's a way to get what you want. And the returning drivers are underlining it's no different in GP3. So impressive then to get this set up where you want it with a brand new car for Fukuzumi. The first time, of course, that he has claimed a podium outside of Asia and on debut as well. And these will be nervous moments for Alexander Albon, 20 years of age. The man who lives in Milton Keynes in the United Kingdom.
progressed nicely up the racing ladder, but in recent years, he's only had the one single seater win. So this would really be a terrific breakthrough for the Thai driver. He was always in the top five in winter testing. And Matt Parry's weekend is well and truly complete now, despite being... It's interesting to get more detail. It's a 10 second time penalty for Matt Parry for more than three changes of direction. The tradition is that you're only allowed two. So that's why it's the most extreme penalty he should get aside from the black and white warning flag. There's one, there's two. I see two there, but it's really the margin of all four wheels off the racetrack. Now there's Ferrucci barging him out of the way. One more time, that's where Matt really needed to stop edging his rival and still pinning him at that stage. He will argue that Ferrucci could have got out of it, could have switched lines. The stewards did not see it that way. It will be interesting to get the Welshman's take on it after this race. I think he'll need a few minutes to calm down, though. We've seen the talent that Parry has as Charles Leclerc currently running in ninth position, as he has been since the start of this race. When he didn't, when he lost a position off the start, but you can see the progress he's beginning to make. Trying to take away the final point from Jake Hughes in front of him, who can't seem to do anything in turn about his teammate, Kevin York. Meanwhile, Matty Vosesikan running in a really strong sixth place. Shown a lot of potential so far in GP3. In the runs he had in the back end of last year. Desperately looking for points in the series though, and it's going well for him at the moment. Well beyond halfway then as Alex Albon at the front has managed to take two tenths out of Oscar Tunjo. It's the middle sector that Tunjo is really struggling to make any impression comfortably faster than the tight driver in the first sector of the lap. But there's no clear overtaking opportunity in the, third, in the first sector of the lap. Hughes very strong this time around, much closer to his teammate than we've seen in the last couple of laps. The drivers know that the tyres are not going to get away from them. But Jorg, so assured out of that final turn, you see the advantage getting on the power a car length earlier has. I think Hughes is in the slipstream now. Got a real chance going down into turn one. So close to the back of his teammate, but not close enough. He has forced him offline, though, and that's going to make things interesting up the hill through turn three. The Brit trying to displace the Swiss driver, but going offline is the risk. Here is the risk. He's having to defend now from Leclerc, who's right with him, trying to overtake his teammate. Going offline through the opening sector of the lap, and that allowed Leclerc to put real pressure on him into turn four. And we've seen so many cars go through the gravel trap this weekend of turn four that it is a pressurized corner when you can hear another engine meters behind you. It's a wonderful engine sound from the custom-built Mechachrome 3.4-litre engine that we have, producing 400 brake horsepower for the new third-generation GP3 car. Hughes now, as you can see, really beginning to harry his teammate. Is he getting to the situation where it's pass or be passed? We had really tight gaps across the field yesterday. We've had exactly the same thing again today, really displaying the driver's ability to withstand and apply pressure. Many of these, of course, driving in their first round of GP3 racing. 15 rookies on the grid this year, and they have for the most part, driven very well indeed. On board with Charles Leclerc. You can see he's gaining, but he's only gaining as they get to the braking zone, not able to jink alongside and force Hughes offline. And as a result, the order remaining fairly static at the moment. Albon, Tunjo, Fuoco, Dennis, De Vries, Essekan, Jorg and Hughes 
thoroughly the men who are scoring points. But Charles Leclerc is desperately trying to do everything he can to change that situation. The man who scored four wins in European Formula 3 last year. But at the moment, Hughes, calm as you like, focusing on his teammate, only with the one defensive move that he had to put in one lap ago to keep Leclerc behind. And is anyone going to try a bold move? We saw it from Alex Albon. But it does seem, as we enter the final few laps, as a tear-off ripped from the visor of Hughes. He means business in the final laps of this race. But can he get close enough? We've seen the start dictate the result here so many times. And at the moment, once again, like yesterday, it seems that an ART going from third to the lead may well decide the race. But here is the leader. So the gap at one point was down to seven tenths of a second. But Albon responded, and he's got a margin of just under a second. This is where the pressure is really going to build for the Thai driver. He's been racing in single-seaters since 2012. ART, the team champions, of course, from last year, desperately looking for a double in the first round of 2016. But Tinjo is there waiting. An experienced driver, the Colombian. Didn't complete the full year, but was still able to show his talent with that sprint race win last year. His only win and his only podium, mind you, so he's on course for his second ever podium in the series. And he's hoping for any hint. You see Albon using much less of the road as we're on board with the man who's occupying the final podium position at the moment, Antonio Fuoco, on course for his third podium in GP3 as it stands. The man who seemed to be allergic to sprint races last year, crashing out of three of them. He was always running within the points, but the contact really not what he needed at all. Maybe a good year to learn the ropes and to have the silly mistakes, though, which he himself admitted were not the cleverest. And has Albon managed to drag the gap out? He has. So Tunjo, in trying to close the gap, has maybe pushed a little bit too far. And in the final sector, Albon so assured he was half a second quicker nearly, and that means that the gap is up to 1.3 seconds at the front, and has that decided the race? Hughes will be getting absolutely sick of seeing Charlotte Clerk in his wing mirrors. This is not a problem that Clerk had yesterday. He drove away from Hughes. But for many people, the championship favorite is not going to try anything daft. There's no need to get yourself a penalty for the next race by risking a wing or a wheel down the inside. One point is simply not worth the risk of a 10-place grid penalty. That is the closest battle on the track. We're riding on board with the Monagas driver. He's hand off the steering wheel for a moment there, heading in to the important section. You've really got to get turns seven and eight, the high-speed chicane right. It's about planting your foot and hoping your car has the grip through nine. You can see him gaining, 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 but not enough as he gets to the breaking point and a lock-up. Is this going to give a chance? to Leclerc, and that's the problem with that chicane. I always think it needs to be a little bit tighter. You don't want to ruin the flow of a racetrack. But that was an alteration to the circuit they made a few years back to try and create a better opportunity. But you can get away with a locker into that turn, and Hughes maintaining the final points-paying position as the anticipation for ART and Alex Albon building all of the time now. He's so close to his maiden victory as his teammate, one of three teammates he has, getting ever closer. You should note that because some, car, uh, because some teams are running three drivers and some teams are running four, only the top three drivers can score points in the team's championship. That will matter more and more as we get to the end of the season, but an important rule change to note for this year.
So you can see the marginal gains that Charles is making. It's not going to be enough, though. We saw Tunjo earlier in this race manage to take two tenths, and I wondered at that point whether Albon was going to be able to repel the Colombian. But he's done such a good job of managing the gap. And here is the battle for the lead. It's still only one lockup away from changing. But interestingly now, we haven't make, mentioned Jake Dennis at all, but he has really got the gap down. And you see dramatically got the gap down on lap 13 and lap 14. And if this continues, real pressure is going to be applied to Antonio Fuoco, who's on for his third podium in GP3. Jake Dennis, of course, chasing his first in this, his debut round in the series. The man who was so impressive in European Formula 3 last year with six wins in the series, including wins at tracks he will visit this year with GP3, Silverstone, and in Spielberg in Austria. Penultimate lap of the race. Dennis has got himself into the margin that we've seen. He's got himself eight tenths of a second away from Frolko, and this seems to be the wall that the drivers hit. They're able to close within a second. How many cars are within a second of each other in the order? We've got Essekan, seven tenths of a second behind De Vries. We've got Hughes, half a second behind his teammate Jorg, and we've got Leclerc, seven tenths of a second behind Hughes in the battle for the final point. See that played out in front of you with the graphic as Hughes trying to apply pressure trying to force the error, trying to cause more sprint race problems from Antonio Fuoco, who's had a really composed weekend. He's had a really strong weekend, exactly what Trident would have liked. The team, of course, that tended to run at the back of the pack in previous years, came alive last year on course to second in the team's championship. And it's as you were to turn 10 frustration for the drivers. Tatiana Calderon was talking about how difficult it is in terms of overtaking around this racetrack. She's currently in 19th position, so no chance to emulate Alice Powell and become a GP3 point scorer, become the second female driver to do so. Alex Alban, though, has a 1.4 second lead going on to his final tour he is just under three miles away from his first victory in gp3 and only his second single seater win since 2014 so a really important lap in the career of alex alban just two tenths slower than tunjo has tunjo got a last lap barnstormer to try and apply pressure in the final sector. I have to say, all the evidence we've seen so far is that Alban will be able to hold on. Jorg desperately trying to repel his teammate, who seems very close indeed, closer than he's been at any other stage of the race. The half a second gap has maintained all the way from lap three. It's gone up to seven tenths. It's gone back down to half a second. But we're focusing on Alex Alban, one of four ART drivers, such a strong stable. Got to, show, got to show good mentality in order to perform in ART this year. You've got to believe that you can do it just as much as your teammates can. And this has been such an assured drive from the man who vaulted himself from third to first, and he's got one corner to go to claim his first victory. Alexander Alban crosses the line to win the sprint race in Barcelona. A superb performance to repel the pressure from Oscar Tunjo, who is second. Antonio Fuoco takes his third podium. He is third on the road. Dennis is fourth to complete a good haul of points from the weekend. Then it's to freeze Essekan with points in GP3 and York, Hughes and Leclerc. Finished in order, that means Essek in sixth, York seventh, and one point for Jake Hughes. Leclerc couldn't do anything about the man he beat yesterday.
And here is your winner after 17 racing laps in Barcelona. That was really very, very calm and very assured from Alexander Albon. And the only blot on his copybook is the wing mirror seemingly trying to detach itself from the car. Would have been interesting if that had come off during the race. Could have caused a problem. Oscar Tunjo will be very happy indeed returning to the seat, the series, returning with a second place. Exactly what Genza wanted from their driver. As the drivers pick up the marbles, track will have been swept, of course. And warm applause from the many fans that are already in to the circuit as Antonio Fuoco gives them a wave. Wonderful, massive spectators there at turn one and turn two. Let's confirm the result then. Alexander Albon is a winner for the first time. Two new winners in two races in 2016. Oscar Tunjo with a second podium and second place on the road. Antonio Fuoco third on the road and a third podium for the Italian in his first weekend with Trident. Then it was Dennis, a good haul of points for him. De Vries, impressive start, got himself up the order from ninth to fifth, and that's where he stayed. Essican with points for Karayan. Great stuff for him and the Finnish team. Then Jorg under pressure all the way through the race from Hughes, who also was under pressure from Leclerc, so the top eight scoring points. And then we had Boschong, who finished where he started in 10th. Perucci, who had that really scary moment, didn't he, with Matt Parry. He was in 11th. Then we had Artianos, 12th, 13th was Fukuzumi. Then we had Palau, who managed to get himself up the order, but only as far as 14th. Then Stuvig, Lacey, who again made progress from his 22nd starting position. Then Gonda, who was off the road at the back end of the opening few laps. Then Calderon, Aitken, a weekend to forget for him on debut. Harry, Tereshenko, Stotthorst, Akash Nandi, and 24th, Mahavir Raghunathan. And here is your winner. I said he's only managed the one win in single-seaters. Has great underlying pace and wonderful for him to be able to display it when it matters. The first time in front of the Formula One paddock. And here he is, outside the car. And visibly elated with his morning's work. He is your second new winner. And we're going to see so many new winners with 15 rookie drivers. But as usual, they're driving ARTs. The team to be 